Lofty ladies were proud of their wide floor wood floors. At least once a week, the servants would wet and dry rub those, uh, those floors to make them shine. It was a simple task of running a wet mop and a dry mop over the floor. But sometimes the careless worker would rub the floors the wrong way and cause streaks. And when that happened, the lady in the house would scold the servants and say, you're rubbing the floor the wrong way. Well, that's how we got our saying, loving the people the wrong way. Well, I want to tell you how to rub people the right way. There's one surefire, fireproof, foolproof guarantee on how to rub the people the right way. And it works every time, any place, and particularly faculty on any everybody. It's something we all need. I need, you need, and the encourage Our human nature is so quick to tear someone down rather than build them up. For every word of encouragement, we probably hear 10 words of discouragement. I've met people over the years, the only time they ever speak to me about anything of importance was to criticize someone or some idea. You hear it at work. You hear it when you talk to your friends or just having a general conversation with anybody. No one has anything positive to say today. You know what? I wish they would shut down the media for 30 days and 90% of the problems would go away. Far too often, we're guilty of taking time to discourage someone. But never taking the time to encourage someone. We all need to adapt this saying. Write your criticisms in the dust and your compliments in marble. But too often, we do the opposite. Remember the old folk song? Or give me a home with a buffalo roam, with a deer and the antelope play. Where sound has heard a discouraging word, the skies are not cloudy all day. Kind of wants you to make the food to Montana, doesn't it? However, if we could move to Montana, you'd still face discouragement. Two buffalo were out grazing. Cowboy went up, looked at those two buffaloes, and said, you're the ugliest critters on earth. You stink to high heaven. You got beady eyes and small feet. And your eyes off. One buffalo told, looked at the other and said, I believe we just heard a discouraging word. <laughs> the truth of the matter is we all have things to take away from us. But we also all have discouragement. There are times when we could use the word encouragement. To some degree or another, we're like the guy who drove up to the used car lot, walked up to the salesman and asked, Are you the salesman that sold me this car? The salesman looked at him very carefully and said, Yes, I believe I am. He said, well, I wonder if you were mind telling me again how great it is. Sometimes I get so discouraged to try it. First thing is, we can love the people by the right way by bringing them blessings. In Acts chapter 4, verses 34 to 37, that there was no needy person among them from time to time those who owned land or house and sold them, brought the money uh, from the sale and put it at the apostles' feet. It was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levi from Cyprus, whom the apostles named Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold the field. He owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. An encourager 
sees the need and says, I'll give what I can. I'll do whatever I can to meet the need I can. John Wesley said, do all you can, do all you can, whatever you can. Now don't get me wrong. Don't think that you have to have money to be an encourager. Because we have so much to give to others as gifts of encouragement. For example, sick people don't need money. They need a word of concern. Lovely people don't need money. They just need a few minutes of your time. Hurting people don't need your money. They just need a touch on the shoulder. Someone to lean on. Discouraged people don't need money. They just need a word of hope. Mark Twain once said, I can live two months on one compliment. John Wooden, one of the greatest basketball coaches in uh, basketball history, coached the UCLA Bruins to 11 national championships in 13 years. Wooden instructed his players that whoever, uh, whoever, whenever a basket was made, the player who scored was required to wink, smile, nod, or point to the player who passed him the ball. One of his players said to the coach, what if they're not looking? John Wooden said, I guarantee that he'll look. He was right. Because everyone is looking for encouragement and affirmation. You see, an encourager is a selfless person. He's always thinking of how he can bless someone else, or help somebody else, or strengthen somebody else. By the way, you can see this same trait in Barnabas over in Antioch in Acts 11, 22, and 23, there was news of, the, uh, news of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived, he saw the, great, the grace of God had done. He was glad and he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Then a few chapters later, in the same city, we read in Acts 4, 15, 22, strengthening the disciples and encourage them to remain true to their faith. And if you notice, what was important to Barnabas was not the faith, but the welfare of the people. And why was Barnabas, Barnabas wanting to take the second building? Why was he wanting to be number two? Because he was an encourager who had one desire. And that was to bring blessings to others and not himself. You rub the right people by breaking down walls. Remember Saul, who later became Paul after his conversion? Nobody trusted him. Everyone shut the door on the man except Barnabas, the minister of encouragement. This is the mark of an encourager. He'll be the champion of the underdog. Go jump on the bandwagon and everyone drops off, jumps off. Go walk, uh, walk in your house when everyone else has walked out. Barnabas took Paul to the apostles. He looked at the apostles and said, Look, you blockheads. He told them how boldly Paul had preached Jesus in Damascus. Barnabas never brought up Paul's past. No, Barnabas was an encourager. An encourager doesn't look at the past, they look at the future. Barnabas didn't look at Paul what, what Paul had done. He looked at what Paul could do. He said, in effect, don't look at the man for what he was. Don't look at the man for what he was. Look at the man for what he is. And I say this for a reason. If you're not careful, you can attempt to encourage people, but you can do it in such a way that you actually wind up discouraging them. Here's what I mean. A little boy said to his pastor, when I grow up, I'm going to become a doctor. And I'm going to make a lot of money. And I'm going to give you some of my money. And the pastor son. That's so kind of you. 
But why are you going to give me a lot of money? Because my daddy said, you're the poorest pastor we ever had. <laughs> themselves down. <coughs> he is usually asking for help to build himself back up. Sometimes it just goes over our heads. In one ear and out the other. We feel like we're like a fellow who was kind of feeling down. He said to his wife, honey, I feel old. Bad, wrinkled, useless and stupid. She smiled and said, don't be silly, you're not old. Now, yeah, just take a moment. You have to encourage all of us to be encouragers. When people come to church, they have to find bridges being built up. Barriers come down. We need uh, to build up. We need to tear down the barriers of uh, racism and build up the barriers of acceptance. We need to tear down the barriers, barrier, uh, barrier of prejudice and build up bridges of love. That's what encourager does. You rub the right people by building bridges for others. If you remember, there was a sharp, a sharp disagreement between Paul and Barnabas over a young man named Mark. See, Paul and Mark were on a missionary journey, and for some reason, Mark had gotten discouraged and went back home. Because of that, Paul basically washed his hands with Mark. However, Barnabas wasn't like Paul. He didn't focus on Mark's problems. He focused on his potential. That's a big difference. Encourage to see potential when other people see problems. Barnabas believed in Mark so much that he parted company with Paul in order to take part with him. Now I find this very interesting. Barnabas would not quit on Paul, but Paul was ready to quit on Mark. And for what Barnabas did for Mark, we ended up with the gospel of Mark. The problem today is we have too many who suffer from what I call the Charlie Brown conflict. And we all know that Charlie Brown couldn't do anything right, no matter how hard he tried. And that's because of a little girl named Lucy. She made sure that she was always around, so he couldn't do anything right. Have any of you ever had a Lucy in your life? Let me tell you, I have. Uh, and, and I just watched this movie uh, the other night with my wife. Years ago, Hollywood made a movie called Stand and Deliver. It's a story of uh, Jamie Escalante, uh, who was an incredibly successful teacher in a rough high school. In his class were two students named John. One was bright and a joy to teach. The other wasted his talents, bucked the floor, and refused to learn anything. While well, a PTA meeting for the parents, Johnny's mother asked Jamie for a report on her son's progress. She said, why, well, Johnny, it's a joy to have in my class. I'm so glad he's one of my students. Well, the next day, the rebellious Johnny walked into the classroom with a big smile on his face. He had a totally different attitude. His teacher, he told his teacher about what he said to him about his mother. And he said, I'm going to work harder than I ever have done. And I'm going to become a good student. And he was. What Johnny didn't understand was that Mr. Rustamante thought that Johnny's mother was the mother of the other boy who was his best student. You see, one word of encouragement spoke at the right moment, at the right time, for the right person in me transformed a young man's life. And that's exactly what encouragement does. So, if you want to rub people the right way, every chance you get, bring blessings.
blessings to others. Break down barriers for others. Build bridges up for others. The amazing, the amazing thing is that you will be encouraged in the process. My question to us this morning, what do we need to do to become encouragers to others? Let's ask God to help us clear our words before we speak them. Let's ask, let's ask him to help us consider the outcome of our decisions before we make them. Let's ask him to help us think about the needs of others before we consider our own needs and wants. So with that said, who around you needs to be encouraged? How can God work through you, through your life, to transform you into an encourager? Because we all need encouragement, especially in this day and age. With the nothing but hatred, discord, and nobody cares for anything. That's the way Father God in this world needs to encourage us. More than anything, we come before you, honoring you, praying for encouragers, praying for this nation, praying for this world to make it a better place. Amen. Yeah.